Good morning. Uh, this is odd. There are four of us in this space that you're used to worshiping in. Uh, we're talking into microphones, not plugged into a loudspeaker. This is on a strange, uncanny valley between what feels like a real Sunday and feels like something kind of staged, but it's not. When are the two or three are gathered, God is there. God is present in this space today, as uncomfortable as it feels for the four of us to be in this space without you. And it's strange for you to be at home watching in through a window in a space that is so well known and intimate to you. The only thing we could do is lean into that tension and embrace it for what it is. Be okay with the fact that this makes us maybe tender or sad. Um, and know that this is still all temporary. We're going to go through this service as, uh, as it is real, because it is, and we're here. In just a moment, Emery will start the prelude. Uh, we'll see him. And hopefully at home, you can turn, however you're watching this, into a space of real worship. Um, I encourage you this morning not to watch this service if you're watching live, um, not to watch it in the background while you're doing something else, but try to maybe light a candle, create a quiet space. Let your home be an extension of this sanctuary, a sanctuary in your own home, and uh, let this be your worship and praise this morning. I'm glad you're watching on Facebook I'm glad you're part of this experiment with us, and we hope to be together again soon. Enough out of me. Let us start this service in worship together. Emery will open with our prelude. <laughs> and God of glory on thy people for thy power from thine ancient church's story bring her but to glorious power grant us wisdom grant us courage for the facing of this hour for the facing of this hour Serve us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant 
Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee, whom we adore, serving thee, whom we adore. Our service this morning starts on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Hopefully you have a prayer book with you at home. If not, stop by the church sometime during the week and pick one up. Or there's a link in the description of this video where you can find a prayer book online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all, you, all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia for the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known. So that we have no need to speak about it, for the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read Psalm 99 as found in our scriptural bulletin. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherub, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above the peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, 
and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You are a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperors. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperors, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As many of you know, I attended a conservative Christian evangelical undergrad for college. It's where I met Christy. It's where I met many of my good friends. And while I still bristle against the theology of that tradition that often breeds an es exclusivity, there is so much I am grateful for in that culture, in that faith, and in that spirit. I understood a facet of Christianity I would have never had if I attended somewhere else. I never know, maybe I would have stopped going to church like many do in college. It was part of the tradition to go to chapel multiple times a week and even go to church on Sunday, and I'm glad for it. While I was there, I also was privy to some really excellent preaching. Dynamite speakers who would get into the aisle and move and the excitement of the gospel message would pour through them and into us students and would last with us for weeks, months, and even years. There were a couple sermons that I had the audio from and I would go back to from time to time and listen to them because I found them so inspiring. There was a language, a concept thrown around in those days for many of the preachers that I had the chance to listen to around this idea of putting God in a box. 
They would say, um, do you put God in a box? Have you put God in a box? Or how big is your God? All of this conversation around how we relate to the divine. And oftentimes, this question of how big is your God or have you put God in a box was specifically preaching to this idea that we limit what God can do. Specifically, in many of the instances that I've heard in the past, what can God do for you? This question would come from uh, a place of addressing our prayers, our desires, our faith, and our wants in God. And so the conversation would be, what are you asking God for? And are you asking God for something big enough? And this wasn't pure prosperity gospel in that we were being instructed to ask God for wealth or prestige or security. But more, what are you asking God for in your life? The hope that you place in God, is it big enough? Is there enough hope? But no matter the angle the preacher was coming from, it often felt like, how big is your God? And is your vending machine idea of God big enough? When you think of God, do you think of something big enough to give you what you need so you can be enough for God? It was very transactional. This isn't a new idea of sizing up God or limiting God's powers. We size God and box God more than we know and have been doing it since we, the advent of the idea of organized religion, gathering together. Think of the earliest days of God's chosen, when they started to fear that God was no longer with them. So they built the calf in the desert to worship something. God was put in a box, the God who forgot about us box and placed God over here, or that God was distant. Even this morning in the gospel, the Pharisees approach Jesus trying to trap Christ, putting Christ in a box. They gave him a choice with no real answer. What are we to do with this coin? The problem in Jesus' era when preaching the sovereignty of God is there was already a sovereign person in that space, and that was the emperor. You could not have the sovereignty of the emperor or the sovereign and the sovereignty of God. They were at conflict. One solution was to deify the emperor. That's not what happened here, but we know through time how often the highest political figure in the land can often become a deity figure. It's not hard to imagine, and it's dangerous. But for Jesus' time, there was still this idea of God and the emperor, and you could almost imagine the two ideas fighting for supremacy. So Jesus had to make a choice. Do we give to the emperor or do we give to God? This was a trap because it was no right answer. He was going to offend someone. So Jesus kind of scoffs and creates a very clear line that this is something tangible, this is money, it has the emperor's name on it, give it to the emperor. Give to the emperor what's the emperor's. Give to God what's God's. This tangible, tactile stuff, this currency that we've made, keep that. The real stuff goes to God. But in this situation, this was a box the Pharisees were trying to put Jesus into. Because once we put Jesus in a box, once Christ is easily distilled and digestible, something that we can comprehend, we can approach it with our own lens. 
if we find a way to take Christ and put it into our box, my Colin box, or the Emery box, or the Diane box, we create a God who looks very much like us, who thinks like us, that feels like us, and ultimately backs up our own personal beliefs. We see this all the time. It's no surprise that when talking about God on any end of a political spectrum, the God that one may believe in looks and sounds and believes a lot like the principles of the one speaking. It's because we've managed to take the divine and make it very small, very convenient. But what if God was taken out of the box? What if the question of how big is your God is unanswerable because the God, the divine Christ, can have no size? What if God is the box? And all that is and all that exists and all that we see and all we do are inside of that. How does that change the way we approach God? How does, that way, how does that change the way that we perceive the divine around us? If we take God out of the box and realize that we are in God's box, God's purview, that everything and everyone we see is and draws us into God, draws us into Christ, how does that change the way we see our neighbor? How does that change the way we pray? How does that change the way we speak to God? It's very easy to pray to a God in a box. The box comes with us. We can put the box on the table, we can open up the box, and we can talk to God when we're ready. And when we're done with that conversation, we can close the box and put it away to the next convenient time we find to be with God. If we take God out of the box and realize that we are, in fact, in the box, does that change the way you speak to God? We realize that conversation with God is not optional or time-related, but constantly we are in dialogue with the divine. As we drive down the street, as we see the incredible fall foliage, as we relate to our neighbor, we are in prayer with the divine. When we see the eyes of a loved one, when we look into the eyes of maybe someone we don't love, that's not a time we can optionally speak to God, but we are interacting with God. We are interacting with the divine substance, the love, the Christ, the God, whatever name we want to call it, as long as we are in God's box, as long as we are surrounded by God's divine unmeasurable, unquantifiable, and unknowable presence. We see God. Our relationships with each other. We see God. Our relationships with creation. We see God. Each step from when you stand up from your table or desk or couch this morning to when you get back into bed is a step with God. So the question I ask this morning is the question that I've been asked so many times by incredible preachers, but flipped on its head. Not, have you put God in a box? Or how big is your God? But have you noticed this God-sized box that we exist in. Have you noticed that everything, everyone, and everywhere is within the loving embrace 
of God. And if you've noticed that, when you start to notice that, when we understand that in the deepest places of our heart, does that change us? I hope it does. I think that change, that change to relate and to love is more of what this world is looking for right now. Amen. Let us continue in worship this morning by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. He is sent and all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he is down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this city of Londonderry, for our surrounding communities, and every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. This week we hold the following people in our prayers. Karen, Diane, Natalie, Thompson, Seth, Amy, Ariana, Dylan, Jane, Penny, Rita, June, Robert, Ed, Beckett, Kim, Laurie, Penny, Myra, Margaret, Susan, John, Gay, Kathy, Deanie, Mary, Grace, Laurette, Oliver, Anne, Beverly, Dawn, Peter, Denny, Joan, Nancy, 
Suzanne, Geraldine, Tiffany, Sharon, Jane, Michael, and Sarah. This week in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Dan and Marilyn Bragg, Elizabeth and Connor Broadhead, Stephen and Deborah Broadhead, for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who have died, the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and, degra and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the communion of the Blessed Mother Mary, Peter, our patron saint, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. Indeed. To thee, O Lord, our God. Most merciful Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In your compassion, look upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Amen. merciful Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not thought to with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to you at home. If you are with someone this morning, we pray that you can grant peace to them and know that wherever you may be, uh, you receive the peace of this community as we all are encompassed inside God's infinite and wonderful, mysterious box. No major announcements this morning. Hopefully, oh, uh, John will have an announcement. We'll, oh, we do? Clean up next Saturday. Clean up outside. Fantastic. Next Saturday, we'll have a clean up uh, outside. Uh, we continue to have some yard work to do before we get into the winter months. So hopefully, uh, if the weather holds and is nice next Saturday, you can join us here at the grounds at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, huh? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Uh, and we'll send an announcement about that. 
speaking of announcements, um, now more than ever, we hope that you are able to get the announcements from church uh, in your email box. It's how we will communicate whether or not we'll be outside or inside. Um, if you, you've already seen it because you're not here, um, you know, uh, as we cancel the church, uh, not cancel, so we change it outside in-person worship this week. Um, it's worth knowing that um, we haven't yet closed the door on being together outside. We have had warm falls in the past. Uh, if next week it looks like it's going to be uh, nice out, warmer than it was this morning, uh, hopefully we can gather outside. So all that to say is stay tuned, keep an eye on your email uh, to know what's happening on Sunday mornings. At some point, we will make the call to be uh, to stream kind of full time, but we're not there yet. I would love to get a few more uh, in person outdoor worships together uh, before the, the long cold winter. Uh, we hope we can see you then. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for joining us live this morning, either live or watching this on YouTube after the fact. Um, I'm glad you took the chance to do so. Ascribe the Lord all honor and glory do his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image to call us to do life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death. You in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature. Live and die as one of us. To reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will. A perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you with unity, constancy, and peace, that the last day brings with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask of your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. May we take that and remember that Christ died for us and feed on Him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. 